Egbert Kop from Iconic Capital. Wonderful to have you over here. Maybe start with an introduction, please. Hi, my name is Egbert Krop from Iconic Capital, indeed. We're an asset manager in cryptocurrencies and running several funds. Uh, uh, I got a background in banking, in risk and compliance, and therefore are here at the risk and compliance uh, event. Uh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's jump right in. Crypto and compliance cannot work together. Oh, yes, for sure. So I think crypto and compliance can actually be friends. So mm -hmm. I think that we're in a premature state of crypto. And uh, it's a, it's a, there, there's a whole sector that's developing into something more mature and more like traditional finance. So I think with the AMLD5, the implementation of the AMLD5 here in Europe, I think already crypto uh, uh, brokers and the so-called virtual asset service providers need to comply with KYC AML uh, laws and uh, the upcoming MICA regulation will also uh, again uh, invoke a new uh, development of, of regulatory frameworks within the crypto industry. Hmm. Can you explain a, bit, a little bit more about the MICA regulation for people that don't know about it? Well, MICA is the regulation that will uh, regulate crypto in Europe. Mm -hmm. So it's a regulation, so it's in effect immediately, and we expect it around 2024, 2025. Uh, it will install governance, uh, especially also for token issuers uh, and, uh, for instance, exchanges to comply with. Uh, we believe that it will be, will, it will invoke another uh, uh, round of uh, evolution within the crypto industry. And therefore, once it's better regulated, we also hope that more traditional finance and institutional parties will join uh, crypto uh, because they have more confidence in the whole industry. Mm. What is necessary to get more uh, institutions into this game, which is actually a game that a lot of individuals are in, but not yet the entire, let's say, business side of things? Exactly. And I think uh, definitely uh, regulation is one of them. So if we talk to institutional parties, several of them mention, yeah, we're more or less on the sideline. We want to get in, but we need more regulation. There's too many cowboys still. Uh, it's 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 land of opportunity, but also a land of risk. And therefore, uh, they refrain currently from still uh, getting into the markets. So I think regulation will help a lot more institutional parties on the crypto side will also help a lot. I, when we founded in 2018, uh, there were, was hardly any institutional parties. So I think that once more institutional parties come to the market and actually are there for, let's say, five to 10 years already, uh, which is quite a long time in crypto, then uh, um, also traditional institutional parties will probably look to the market and say, okay, there's more uh, uh, mature parties uh, uh, around to actually cooperate with within the industry. Mm -hmm. So as a company, it might be quite scary maybe to also deal with the hacking that is out there. We saw many cases coming uh, by in the public debate in the last weeks of hackers and major, major, major cases. So how do you, you know, deal with that and what sort of prevention do you make sure to have in place? Yeah, I think currently the main hacks, it used to be exchange hacks that happened a lot, and now it's DeFi hacks that happen a lot. So uh, we see several developments there. So on the exchange side, the days of Mt. Gox, where a, 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 a exchange just collapsed and everything was gone, are a bit gone. And on the DeFi side, uh, because the exchanges are much more mature, security is much better organized and uh, it's just a whole different ball game there. The, the budgets are way higher than they mm. were in the past. So uh, the tr parties in the uh, exchanges are definitely much more professional. On the yeah. DeFi side, it's just a new industry. So uh, it's still searching for the right. And as more of these hacks happen, uh, also the, the learnings are incorporated into the system and therefore improves over time. 
And what we see, crypto is quite a community-driven industry. So everything is about community. It's actually part of the whole idea that you're a community rather than uh, a, a one big institution. So we see that a lot of these hacks, although on several occasions money is actually gone forever, but on several of these hacks, people are compensated by the industry to actually say, okay, well, we had a hack. It was, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that all that money was lost, but hey, here we are together. We fund uh, the people that lost money and uh, we, we take on and go uh, forward with, uh, with our projects. Yeah. Excellent. So another trend that we see is uh, this concept called fractional ownership, especially with security tokens, royalty tokens. Um, what do you see uh, on a daily basis? On a daily basis yourself. Well, I think that's the beauty of blockchain that we actually can uh, own things fractionally, and uh, uh, I think that. Security tokens, for instance, once the regulation kicks in, I think that will also take a jump. Uh, uh, and I think even in, in the stock and traditional market, it's fractional ownerships of stocks and it's also getting more and more and more popular. Mm. So I think that will definitely increase. And if you look at things like the metaverse, for instance, uh, Facebook even changed their name to Meta. Um, uh, in the future, we will probably also own uh, things digitally rather than physically, mm. which is uh, yeah quite a interesting development to, to see. And blockchain and crypto can play definitely play a nice role in that. Yeah. yeah. So today you're also going to talk about NFTs and compliance and regulations and and governance in a broader sense. Uh, what is your main message? If you could just bring one thing across, what would that be? Be careful. So, <laughs> yeah, NFTs is uh, very interesting. So, uh, digital ownership of uh, digital objects is obviously very interesting. But I think it's still uh, an immature market. So, a lot of things are, are happening. I will talk a bit about uh, um, uh, schemes to actually increase the value of your NFT uh, without having any transactions below it, or at least transactions from, from third parties. But um, uh, I think NFTs are, if you, if you like it, if you're interested, uh, go for it, but only invest money that you can really miss. Mm. Uh, so if you, uh, you're, you, you want to sleep, uh, uh, try to avoid not sleeping at night because you jumped on the wrong uh, project. Mm. Anything? Which is, a, which is probably a general remark in, uh, in crypto. Uh, uh, do it with money that you can uh, afford to lose. We hear that a lot for your transfers, <laughs> people. We do know that. <laughs> um, anything else that as a company you're seeing on a daily basis or predictions maybe in the coming period? Well, our prediction is that crypto is here to stay. So uh, it will not leave. What we will, what we anticipate is that once the regulations mature, also the traditional parties will come more to the markets. So currently we see a lot of private individuals trading on exchanges. Uh, interest in us is coming from more the, the family funds and the more risk side of the markets. But over time, more and more of the traditional parties will also join the industry. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's the development we see going forward. Uh, what the next hype will be is obviously very hard uh, to to predict. Any bubbles? Oh yeah, I think we're definitely maybe already in a bubble. I think some of the air from the bubble may have already uh, uh, gone out a bit uh, by now. But uh, um, yeah, we should also. It will come in waves, like uh, like most of the markets. Also, like the internet, it it didn't f f was it wasn't what it was what it is now from the start. So uh, I think we need to be patient, see how it develops, and uh, also try not to look uh, daily. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>